Apple made a ton of changes to their operating systems at the annual Worldwide Developers Conference for 2025, and in today's video, we're going to dive into all of the different systems and check out what's new. But before we dive in, let's take a look at their new design language that they're calling Liquid Glass. Now, this design language is across all of their platforms, from the Apple TV to the Mac to the iPad, the iPhone, and even the watch. And this is what it looks like. It has this transparency blur effect onto it. Um, it's a brand new design and this entire new language that sets across the entire operating systems that you use. And this is the first big change in a long time that's affected every Apple platform. And one thing that I appreciate is that they applied it to every device. Now, I know in past years, they would change things that were only on the iPhone and they wouldn't reflect on the Mac, but that's not the case this year. The design languages are pretty much a unified system and an updated app design across all of Apple devices and platforms. So all of their operating systems, iOS, iPadOS, macOS, watchOS, and tvOS have this new liquid class design interface, which is a little eye-catching and eye-opening and a lot different. You can see here, as you get notifications on iOS, the transparency is, is in effect. You can see the background blurred a little bit, and it's like you're looking at a piece of glass um, and still seeing your images and your content in the background there. So really fascinating stuff here as they've introduced this new design language across their entire platform from the iPhone to the Mac. They have this new clear effect, which allows you to, instead of having a dark mode, you can have a clear mode where you can see through all of your icons. Um, so some people may like that. And you can even build these dynamic icons with their new um, you know, platform that they have here, Icon Composer, that allows you to create liquid glass icons. Pretty fascinating that they created an entire interface for you to build out your new app icons for this operating system. So without further ado, let's dive into the first platform today, and that's going to be macOS. macOS has a really um, interesting approach this year. When we think about macOS, you know, it's the power users. Um, it allows you to, you know, do really advanced stuff on the computer. And even you can use it for schoolwork or basic stuff, but it supports all of the Apple users, whether they are a pro or whether they um, are just a, a regular user. So the main thing coming to macOS is this brand new liquid design, this liquid glass design. You can see what that looks like with some updated icons. Um, you can see what control center looks like now in the menu bar. Instead of the mini bar having the traditional, um, you know, bar that's behind it, it's now translucent and transparent, so you can just see your background. Um, they've refreshed some apps like the camera and the uh, the the interface for Safari and browsing your web pages. Of course, they've got Apple Intelligence. They've created a new local model that allows you to use things like shortcuts with Apple Intelligence. Um, you can accelerate your workflows and you know, use uh, Apple Intelligence to power out with live translation and uh, even use the Images app to create content in this new Mac operating system. Another cool thing that's coming to the Mac is continuity. Now on the iPhone, if you order something from Uber Eats or you are checking out basketball scores or whatever your live widget activity is on your lock screen, that's gonna be coming to the Mac, um, starting with this new version of Mac OS Tahoe 26. And now another thing to note is they're no longer calling um, the, the software releases by you know numbers of um, versions that have previously come out. They switched to a year theme so they named this version Mac OS Tahoe 26 based off the year 2026 that's upcoming. And instead of calling it, you know, Mac OS 16.0 um, or 16.0, um, they're calling it Mac OS Tahoe 26 for the year 2026. And they also apply that same change to all of their operating systems. So instead of getting, you know, iOS 19, we're getting iOS 26. So we'll dive into those later operating systems in a second. But to get back on topic here, live widgets, live activities are coming to the Mac, and that's going to be very very helpful to see them while you're working on your computer rather than peeking at your phone every two seconds. So that'll be really cool to see in the menu bar just like that. Um, they've redesigned the phone app for the Mac. You can see all your favorites and all your most recent contacts up close and interact with them. They've got screen calling, which I'm going to dive into this more when we get to the iPhone section, but it's a really cool way to, um, you know, prevent spam and prevent people that don't really, you know, 
want to talk to you, whether it's a cold pitch or um, someone, an unknown number or scammer, now you have screen calling to prevent those calls from getting through to your phone. Your phone won't even ring until they tell you why they want to talk to you, and then you have the chance to talk to them. So really cool software implementations coming to the phone app with uh, screen screening calls. Um, Spotlight has been redesigned from the ground up to be a powerful um, way to jump into tasks, to jump into workflows, to run shortcuts. So all you have to do is just press the command spacebar app, Spotlight search comes up, you can see what it looks like in our previous operating system right here, and then what it looks like in the future operating system. All of your apps come up, um, you can create automations. So this is going to be a brand new way to interact with the Mac using a, a, a new version of Spotlight that increases your productivity with workflows, automations, a faster way to find your apps, and um, you know to be able to search across all your computer. So there's a lot more that's not featured on this page here, but they've got new updates to games, password messages, reminders, FaceTime, photos, family. The journal app, which was pre previously only available on the iPhone, is now coming to the Mac, so you can make entries on the Mac. That's going to be really exciting. They've got some new accessibility features with magnifier and more um, to be able to interact on the Mac, and then notes too. So that is the Mac. The Mac is getting a brand new operating system, Mac OS Tahoe 26, and that's coming later this fall. Let's dive into iPad OS 26. Now, iPad OS 26 gets a lot of cool updates that makes it more like the Mac. And just like the Mac, it gets liquid glass design. So all of the interfaces have this blurry effect on it and allow you to interact with it um, in this new design language. But the key change to the Mac that they're bringing, or to the iPad that they're bringing from the Mac is this new interface that allows you to size windows. Um, so you can see here, you can have multiple windows on an iPad now. And it even comes with the Mac-like interface to, um, we zoom into here, you can see the, the stoplight, the red, yellow, and green, just like we have that on the Mac, that is coming to the iPad. So that's really exciting to see. And we'll see what it looks like to be able to resize windows, to have more than one window on the screen at the same time. Um, developers get access to a background API now that allows you to export things like a video or make background processes. And they still go on even when you exit the app, which is going to be really handy for professionals that use this. Um, so really cool software updates coming to the iPad. We get this traditional fan out view. You can put folders in the dock. This looks very similar to the Mac. And even though the iPad is not the Mac, it is becoming very close to it, which is really fascinating. You can see that there are multiple windows, six windows on the same screen at the same time running on an iPad. This thing is extremely powerful now. And as we talked about earlier, this liquid glass design comes to the iPad as well. You can see what it looks like in various different settings right here. We can see this flexible windowing that we just talked about. Better ways to browse. You can change the side, the colors of folders, a supercharged files app, and now a preview app comes to the iPad for the very first time. When you open up an image or a PDF or a file, instead of it opening in the files app, now it opens in its own preview app. The same preview app that's on Mac OS on the desktop is now locally on the iPad and you can edit documents, you can sign them, you can interact with the preview app. Um, so really cool software updates coming. And then of course we get Apple intelligence um, and shortcuts and smart reminders and really cool um, different things like this. So really cool that you can use Apple intelligence across the entire platform and to use shortcuts and make automations and workflows. So we've got communication going on. The phone app redesign comes from the iPhone itself in iOS 26. So we get all of these cool options right here um, that are coming over to the iPad and so much more between these various things on the on the um, device on the page here. We see journal is coming, games, audio recording. Um, audio recording was a really big one. You can now do podcasts and record them locally on your iPad. So a lot of cool things coming to the iPad operating system in iPad OS 26. Now, let's take a look at iOS 26. Of course, as we've had the current theme of reviewing the previous two operating systems with macOS and iPadOS, well, guess what? The same theme exists. 
the iOS 26 gets the liquid glass design, an entirely new interface to interact with your phone. So it's really, really nice. You get this clear mode, um, you get this blurry text texture, um, it's liquid glass. It honestly reminds me of when Steve Jobs introduced um, the new version of OS 10 and, and the aqua interface and the buttons that looked so good that you wanted to lick it. I love this design and I think, in my opinion, I like it a lot better than iOS 7 and flat design. I'm so happy we're moving away from that and moving into something, you know, a new era that creates, you know, depth between your elements and your designs. And I think this is just an early version of what we're going to see with augmented reality. And, you know, five, 10 years when real life digital objects are laid on top of our current world. And of course, we'll get to see a preview of that with Vision OS in a bit. So going back to iOS 26 here. We can see we get very much the same interface here. We get Apple intelligence. We can run, we can run the automations. Um, we get live translation. We get the images app for the playground to generate AI images. We can do more with visual intelligence. The screen calling that we talked about in Mac OS and iPad OS is coming to the iPhone. So uh, one of my favorite features though is the hold feature. You can hold the call. So you call someone like a company and they put you on hold and you don't want to wait. Well, you can just press this button. You can press the more button on the iPhone and it will uh, hold for you. And then it will notify you when it's time to pick up. You can screen new senders. So you get a lot of messages from unknown senders. When this is on, it, they'll all be you know, I guess sorted in their own folder called unknown senders and you'll never see their message unless you click on it, which is really cool. So it hides away all the spam. You've got polls and messages. You can add backgrounds to iMessage chats now. Um, you can go ahead and use the new Maps app that understands your preferred routes and even remembers where you've been in previous locations like visited places, um, which is really cool. They got auto mix and lyrics translation, kind of like a DJ for Apple Music. You can store even more in wallet like your digital passport and then new games, the new games apps with uh, iOS 26. So that's a preview there of iOS 26. Let's dive into watch OS 26. Of course, uh, we, can, we have to start off with workout buddy. Imagine if you had your very own personal trainer that gave you a motivational pitch the second you started working out. You activate a workout and it just gives you an auditorial amazing, um, you know, pitch like hey you've climbed 2,000 feet of elevation or hey this is your 13th workout for the week you're going great so it just motivates you to work out as you start your new your new jogs or your new activities on the workout app the liquid glass comes to the watch os interface too so you'll be able to see what that looks like you get a smart stack that offers a hint to see what would be useful to you so if you open the camera then it may suggest opening the camera remote on your watch um, you can dismiss notifications now with the flick, same with calls, and then suggested smart activities will appear. So similar design, um, really cool. You've got all of this great motivation that we just talked about. You can celebrate milestones. They redesigned the workout app and you've got sounds to keep you moving. Um, you've got a brand new interface here. The, those backgrounds come to the watchOS interface. So watchOS 26 shows you your background. So you get live translation. We just talked about smart actions. You can manage unwanted calls and you can let the phone wait, uh, the, the phone app wait for you even on watchOS 26. So whatever you need is automatically there available just with the flick of a wrist. Notes comes to the Apple Watch, which is ex exciting. If you take a lot of notes on your iPhone, you can now read them on the Apple Watch. Um, and create a new note on your wrist easily. So that's gonna be really helpful. And there we go, that is watchOS 26. So let's dive into the Vision OS. So we talked about this liquid glass design and I feel like Vision OS um, 1 was just previously a, a beta test for what it would look like to bring smart elements into a physical world that are digital. And they're, they're starting out with uh, a new interface here for Vision OS 26. They're implementing Liquid Glass, of course. Um, and Liquid Glass was inspired, of course, by Vision OS. Um, but the cool thing is you can put widgets in place and keep them there and it will remember where they are. So if you wanna pin a calendar in, on a physical wall, it will remember that a calendar goes there on that wall. So really cool to think about that. If you, um, you know, maybe someone will develop a live TV widget where you can pin that live TV widget on the wall. And then every time you put on your Vision OS operating system, your Apple Vision Pro, you see the TV on the wall. So really cool 
options that we have there. You can browse the web, you can play new games, they have these new controller supports. Um, so Apple chose not to develop controllers and now they're just using Sony controllers that you can Bluetooth pair to the Apple Vision Pro themselves. Um, so you can share experiences together, watch the same movie in the same room. You've got Apple intelligence and more. So this is a beautiful widget that they placed right here on the, on the wall. It's a digital widget. It's not physically there in the real world. It's just displayed through the spatial experience of putting on the Apple Vision Pro. So spatial scenes, you, they've updated the all new persona that makes it look more like you and more real. Um, and you can, of course, use 3D models in the web browser now while you're scrolling. And you've got inline spatial screens to be able to um, turn on spatial browsing and just see what it looks like to have that, that website in your physical environment um, in line as if you know it was a part of that environment. So really cool options there. So new ways to interact, you can use the Logitech Muse to draw and design in three dimensionals and then these PlayStation VR2 Sense controllers. So you can expand what you can see. It's got a wilder view of support, new immersive content, and the Jupyter environment and so much more. You can do folders finally in, in Apple Vision Pro, seamless switching between users. You can save your eye setup so you don't have to switch it all the time. You can unlock with an iPhone, hand tracking up to 90 Hertz, look to scroll, Apple intelligence and accessibility, and so much more. So these are just the early preview of features that are coming to the Apple operating systems later this year, typically rolling out around September or October. Of course, we're early in the year. These features are subject to change and there's a lot more to you know review and understand. They're gonna be beta testing this over the next couple of months. They're gonna add new features. They're gonna remove features, um, but it's been really cool to be able to review what's new with Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference and what's coming new for consumers later this year. If you enjoyed this complete beginner's guide of the WWDC recap for 2025, be sure to give it a like. Let us know what your favorite feature coming to an Apple platform is later this year in the comments below. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to figure out when we release our next technology video. We appreciate you for watching this and we'll see you in the next one.